Just five days after surviving an assassination attempt, Donald Trump has arrived at the Republican National Convention. He will be addressing it to accept his party's presidential nomination in a speech designed to unify his party and the nation. The 78-year-old will address the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, hoping to build momentum towards a November victory over U.S. President Joe Biden. Trump's speech will mark the climax and conclusion of a massive four-day Republican rally that drew thousands of conservative activists and elected officials to swing state Wisconsin. Apart from Trump, the most prominent speakers at the fourth day will be former Fox News host Tucker Carlson, a wrestling icon Hulk Hogan, and ultimate fighting championship President Dana White. Trump appeared each of the first three days with a white bandage on his ear covering a wound he sustained in the Saturday shooting. Some of his supporters have started sporting their own bandages on the convention floor. So far, the convention has showcased a Republican Party reshaped by Trump since he shocked the GOP establishment and won over the party's grassroots on his way to the party's 2016 nomination. Trump's rival have almost vanquished, which includes Senator Ted Cruz of Texas and Marco Rubio of Florida, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Now for more on this, we have joining us Jonathan Wachtel and a director who is director of communication at the U.S. Mission to the United Nations. He is also a global affairs analyst and co-founder of civic tech company Arco. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure, Joshua. Now, five days after surviving an assassination attempt, Donald Trump will be addressing the Republican National Convention. He had earlier said that he is a changed man. He has also mentioned changing his speech, has promised to offer a softer and kinder message of unity. It's however hard to imagine, but what kind of performance will we be looking at uh, today from Trump? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely uh, we, we may see a more subdued uh former President Trump in his speech uh, this evening here in, in uh, Milwaukee, or we we very well could see the bombastic, very lively Trump that may come out. You know, this, this speech, of course, will be uh, put into a teleprompter, uh, so there isn't going to be extra, you know, extremist speaking going on here. He will be reading, uh, but, you know, as had happened during his presidency, and of course, when he's on the campaign trail, he does deviate from the written text uh, that he has in his prompter. So there are expectations that this will be very different from uh, other speeches that we've heard from the president uh, and and something that would sort of point at almost a, a remake of, of, of the leader um, in which the past uh, four years of presidency would, would be looked upon as a, an era of great achievement in his estimation and, and a look ahead at to, at to what he would hope to aspire uh, give, if given another four, four years. Right. Uh, previously, he talked about bringing unity. Now, from Donald Trump's perspective, what does unity mean and what does he seem to present to the Republicans? Well, you know, on the uh, campaign trail, we have not seen anything that speaks of unity. It's more about uh, taking shots at the, uh, the the President Biden's administration and trying to uh, make the make the case that uh, all the failures of that administration would be overtaken and uh, that the country would be put on a path uh, toward greater prosperity and more accountability among all the litany of other uh, complaints that the uh, Trump team uh, has about President uh, Biden and what we've been hearing echoed by one speaker uh, after another here at the convention in, in Wisconsin. Right. Now, while the Republicans are set to emerge from their convention more united than in recent memory, Democrats seem to be divided about whether Biden should continue to lead the ticket. What are your perspective? I mean, it is in many ways a perfect storm against the Democrats at this point. They have a president who, who clearly is not the same uh, politician that we've seen over the last decades, definitely having... Uh, a lot of uh, difficulties in terms of articulating, in terms of energy, in terms of uh, a focus, uh, among other things, there are you know all sorts of claims about real severe cognitive issues uh, at play here. Uh, I'm not going to weigh in on that, but you know certainly uh, he is the president of the United States. Though we're not seeing him because he's isolated because he contracted COVID, 
Um, certainly a, a, a very different figure from the man I watched over the last decades as, as an American citizen uh, and, you know, his uh, prominence within the Senate uh, and then eventually um, vice president under President Obama and then eventually clinching uh, the presidency uh, against Donald Trump. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at four years on from that period and uh, clearly a, a different figure uh, from from the man who was running four years ago. Right. Well, it's still to see if Donald Trump will be addressing Biden in his speech, which is kind of like, of course, obvious if we could go ahead, but we'll be tracking that. Thank you so much for Jonathan for joining us on the show. Pleasure.